Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing well. I apologize for not posting any videos lately. I had two weeks of midterm exams and then I went to Europe for my reading week, which for those who don't know, it is the Canadian version of the spring break, only without the wild part of the American version. Here is just a week to relax after the exam period. Lately, I have bought a few magical realism novels. I got Isabel Allende's La Casa de los Espíritus, uh, which I haven't read, so I'm excited to read this book. I also got Karina Sainz Borgo's La Isla del Doctor Schubert. She is a Venezuelan author based in Spain. I talk about one of her books. It's It Will Be Night in Caracas. I talk about this book in my top 10 books from 2022 and I really enjoyed reading this book and I decided to get this one. This novel just came out and it's marketed as a magical realism novel. I also got Gabriel Garcia Marquez's 100 Years of Solitude, which I'm currently reading. I read this novel in Spanish when I was 14 years old and I really like it. Uh, this time I decided to get it in English just because I enjoy reading translations. It's really interesting to see how the translators manage to reflect the cultural aspects of a work in another language. Some of them do an amazing job. So because I'm currently reading 100 Years of Solitude, I thought why not make a video on South American magical realism and share my perspective with you. Many people think that magical realism began with Gabriel Garcia Marquez and that the genre is limited to South American authors and stories, but that is not true. Other countries known for their magical realism stories are Germany and Japan. Even Angela Carter wrote a magical realism novel called Nights at the Circus. This one I haven't read, but I will this year. So technically everyone can write magical realism stories. You don't need to be from one place or another. Now, although I'm going to talk about the conventions of this genre, since I have only read magical realism novels from South America, I will focus on the South American aspects. Magical realism takes inspiration from our folklore. In South America, we have many folk tales, tall tales, and legends. And you can find many elements from these stories in magical realism novels. We are also very superstitious and our beliefs play an important role in magical realism stories. Because of that folkloric influence, magical realism features ordinary characters in ordinary situations. Although we have magical aspects, the story's main events are very mundane. Magical realism stories are grounded in reality. The world building is very small and simple. The fantastic elements are never explained. Strange things just happen, but the characters never question these events. So magic too is presented as something ordinary and mundane. The magical events do not even alter the characters' lives in any significant way. Life for them follows a natural course. In contrast, more serious things such as war, colonization, death, and family conflicts are more important in the characters' lives. For instance, there is a part in 100 Years of Solitude where travelers bring a flying carpet to the village. People take turns flying the carpet as though it were the most normal thing in the world. In another part, a man opens the cinema and people go to watch a movie. But the protagonist dies and the audience begins to destroy the theater because they think the story is real. So in this novel, the characters question ordinary things that are strange to their village. Yet, they take fantastic things for granted because they are accustomed to them. Some academics believe that magical realism is a post-colonial reaction to European realism, but I think there is much more than that. My personal theory is that our folklore is very present in our daily lives, and magical realism simply reflects that Latin American reality. In Venezuela, even if you are a skeptic, you will not dare to disrespect certain traditional beliefs. 
For instance, you might not be superstitious, but if your grandmother tells you that you should not mess with the anima solace candle she lights every night, because otherwise her angry spirit will pull your feet in your sleep, you will listen to your grandma. <laughs> when it comes to superstitions, we believe that it's better to be safe than sorry. My family believes that you should never clean your house right after a visitor has left, because if you do it, that person will never return. Do I believe this is true? No, still, I never ever clean my house after a visitor leaves. In Venezuela, I grew up watching all sorts of bizarre things. Crying saints, virgins that produce glitter, and a nun whose body will not decompose. We even have this traditional dance called Los Diablos de Yare, in which people dress as devils and dance, and some people in the audience always claim to see an extra dancer in the group. They say this is the devil himself who comes to dance with the people. And these are only a few examples I'm giving you to show you how magic has a place in our lives and how it is part of our reality. I guess some people might call us superstitious, ignorant, and uneducated, but I believe that magic is one of the most wonderful things that our culture has. And you have to be a bore to question the credibility of these events. We can be aware that some of these things are superstitions and others are scams and still enjoy the absurdity of them. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and let me know if you're interested to know more about Venezuelan culture. I'll be glad to share my experiences with you. Take care. Bye.